So I unpackaged the uh, the new uh, Moen shower head, the three in one. It's called an Atune, A T T U N E. It's got the shower head here. It's got this diverter piece on here. Um, it's got this piece right here as well that goes on to the end of this hose. Hello fellow do-it-yourselfers, this is Sheldon, your do-it-yourselfer, coming to you from beautiful Boston Spa, New York, which is about a stone's throw northwest of the capital city of Albany, New York, and I want to thank you for checking out my channel and for watching this do-it-yourself video. In today's video, I install a Moen Atune 3-in-1 shower head. Uh, it was easier than you think, I only needed two tools to do it, and actually directions said I only need one. But I didn't want to take a chance on the downspout when I was pulling off the uh, at the uh, old shower head. So, hope you enjoy. So, which is good to see is lately, the last couple of things I've been installing in my house um, as a do-it-yourselfer, um, instead of putting directions in the package, it actually tells you to go to a certain website where there's a video for you to watch on the installation, which I think is great because I've done other things where the directions just, they stink. There's things that are left out. They're not easy to follow. They're just ridiculous. And, uh, and I put those in some of my review videos of how the instructions are bad. But this one right here, which is great, it shows a video. Most of American Muscle um, installations, um, things that I bought for my Mustang, there's usually videos out there. But not everyone has had it. But I think it's great because right now I'm putting in a mowing uh, three-in-one shower head on here. And it tells you to go right to mowing.com backslash insulation to find the instructions. That's a step in the right direction. So before I even think about doing anything, I've got to take that old shower head off right there. And you can see the stem that sticks out from there. You got to make sure that doesn't spin because if that spins, you could develop a leak into the wall. So I'm going to grab onto that with a pair of vice grips onto the stem. And then I'm going to grab a pair of uh, uh, channel lock pliers and pull that off. Vice grips on here like this. Put that on there. Then I'm going to grab onto the shower head with the channel lock. I want to make sure that stem doesn't move. And hopefully, I'm going to get this to move. Come on. Next, I'm going to install the shower head onto the diverter, and it just, um, all it does is screw right on here. According to the directions, it does not need the plumber's tape that goes around here for leakage because it has a good, and you can see it in there, has a good rubber washer in there, so it's not needed. So I'm not going to put that on there. It also says not to tighten it, not to over tighten as well, because uh, that rubber washer provides a good uh, watertight seal on there. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. Okay, as you can see, I put it on there. It's tight, not over tightened, but tight. Now this piece right here, right on here, is what goes onto that uh, water spout uh, elbow that comes out of the wall. And again, that has a nice uh, rubber washer in there. It says not to use plumber's tape on there. Uh, and then just tighten this. It doesn't have to be over tightened, just tighten. Because if you over tighten it, I think it can crack. These things aren't, you know, made out of beautiful steel. These things aren't all that expensive. 
I think I paid around 40 bucks or so for this uh, for this uh, three-in-one shower head. So I'm going to put this on. That's the next step that I'm going to do right now. That's hand tight for right now. I'm going to uh, go ahead and put the vice grips back on the uh, the spout. And with my channel locks, I'm just going to tighten that a little bit further. Um, and that piece should be done. Also, when you put this on, you got to make sure that this spout underneath that diverter is down. Because that's where that hose will come down uh, for uh, the, uh, for the uh, handheld shower uh, head that you can use. So next I'm going to unwrap these ends off of here and open this up and I'm going to attach this to that bottom spout that I just showed you uh, on that diverter that this has to hook up to in order to put that handheld uh, apparatus on there. But that's the next thing that I'm going to do. Now both ends are the same size. So you don't have to try and figure out which end goes on that piece and which end goes on that spout on that diverter. They're both the same size. So for right now, I'm going to I'm going to hook this to the diverter first and tighten that up, and then I'm going to hook that handheld uh, sprayer on right when I'm done with that. Now you notice on this piece right here that I'm, I'm putting on there for the hose, it doesn't look like a nut on here that you grab onto with a pair of pliers. So that's why they're saying don't over tighten. You don't need it because those rubber washers are so good. And this is a mowing product, which is usually very well. So that should not leak by just doing it hand tight. So I'm just gonna do that. And it'll all uh, come out in the wash when I try that, when I turn the water on and figure it out. So right now that is on there. And I'm going to put the, uh, the handheld uh, shower head on here and just the sprayer uh, on next. And again, as you notice, it doesn't look like a nut. It doesn't have, so you would take a pair of pliers or a wrench or something on the end of this and screw it uh, hard onto the end of this. It's not made like that. So you don't even need a tool. So, so far for tools for this, I just needed two things. I needed the channel lock pliers that I had, and I also uh, needed that vice grip on there for that downspout. That's it. So I'm going to hook this up on there now, and uh, I'll get right back to you. And that's all it takes is hand tight, and that's it. And there's your finished product. Just like the picture. Everything's tight. Of course, you can move this around right here to figure out what spray you want coming out of it. And this is the same way. The handheld sprayer, you can move this one way or the other, supposedly. There it goes. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> but you can move it one way or the other. And actually, um, according to the directions, you shouldn't use just one um, one thing at a time. Both of them, the water should come out of both for maximum pressure to come out, maximum water to come out. So they both pretty much, I think, would be running at the same time. But I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and let's see if we got any leaks and uh, we'll go from there. And I'll get right back to you. And there you have it. It's running fine. I see no leaks coming out of there. The stem. I see no leaks coming out of the stem, where the connector is. I see no leak coming out of here, where that connected to the uh, handheld sprayer. And uh, it's a pretty long hose too. Should be plenty big enough for the dog and whatever uh, my wife wanted it. So I'm happy that uh, I'm able to help her out with this. So there's another do-it-yourself uh, job from a guy who's not a plumber. Anybody can do this stuff. 
The stuff is set up nowadays for most anybody to be able to do, it, to do this. And I hope that you found this video useful when you're doing this install. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if uh, you would subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. I like putting out this content uh, for people to be able to do their own stuff like I do at home. And if, please leave a comment, but make sure they are clean. This is a family channel. Until next time.